G'day fellas, welcome to a video on a hotfix. Now normally I wouldn't be doing a video on a hotfix, but I decided to do one on this specific hotfix because it actually adds quite a lot of important stuff. So let's go in, we'll take a look at it. I'm not going to be looking at the performance and stability, the gameplay, the multiplayer, all the UI stuff, not even the MISC stuff or the art. We're going to be taking a look straight at the balance and talking about that. So the first thing that we've got is a balance change to fields. Now fields are the unique farm that both the Ethiopians as well as the house are going to have access to. Now, previously, before this update, there were two villages that could be on that. So you would say, as an example, get 16 villages, you would put down your uh, granary, and then you would put eight fields down all around it. 16 is, is uh, the village account that you'd need. Now it's up to three. So it's a pretty big buff here because it means that you're going to be able to take up a lot less space in your base. You're still going to be taking up more space than European civilizations. It's still going to be a lot more APM, but it's a, it's a great change. Really helps out the, those late game African civilizations. They've also increased the cost of 50 wood because of this change. Now, obviously, if they increased it to 60 wood, it would probably be a bit more fair. But uh, 50 wood is, uh, you know, a still a reasonable sort of uh, middle ground. They've also increased the build time from 50 seconds up to 60 seconds. So a, re a reasonable change here. Uh, and it also says here, late game after the pre-imperial granary upgrades are researched, African villagers now gather coin at a comparable speed to those tasks to estates or rice paddies. Uh, so uh, they weren't doing that before, so it's a, a good change uh, and overall going to improve the late game of the African civilizations. Uh, they were a little bit weak in the late game. In the early game, obviously, very, very strong. Uh, let's take a look at the next thing that they've got. So Desert Raider, which is the Outlaw, has been adjusted as follows. So the Siege damage has been reduced to 15. Train time has been increased to 34 seconds from 20. And cost has been increased from 50 food, 50 food, 100 coin uh, to 130 coin. So a 30 coin, sorry, I should probably say 130 coin and 50 food to 100 coin and 50 food. Oh, gosh, that was just terrible. But anyway, it's had its cost increased by 30 coin. The big thing here is that the siege damage has been reduced. Now, with this unit, this is the unit that's got that double rate of fire on the siege. So basically, this is going from 40 siege down to 30 siege. That That's the reality there. Also, increasing the drain time is really going to help out in the early game. Those rushes that have been hitting people extra fast are going to be 14 seconds later. Probably going to be one cavalry unit less as well, because they're going to be uh, an extra 30 coin on each of them. So if you've got four of them, that's 120 coin. That's your fifth one right there. So, you know, maybe they're missing an extra one or two in the batch. So that's a big deal. And on top of that, their siege damage is reduced now. So I, I suspect this is going to see the Desert Raider brought back into alignment with where people expect it to be. Uh, Berber Nomads. So the unit now deals damage against huntable animals after Royal Hunters is researched. So this was something I actually picked up. For whatever reason, it, it just didn't do damage to, uh, to animals. It was weird. Uh, Loyal Warriors properly causes both influence and gold cost to be lowered by 15% instead of 30%. Uh, so, yeah, you could get Mamelukes for, like, 20 gold. Uh, so, glad that they fixed that. Uh, that. That was a bit fun. Uh, Ethiopians, so they've changed the Sebastopol Mortar. So, the Sebastopol Mortar has been adjusted as follows. So, the hit points have been reduced from 500 down to 475. Now, this is actually a break point. So, the break point that this is is three Culverin shots. So, a single Culverin shot, 160 damage against artillery. Two, 320. Three, 480. So, it's going to enable three Culvs to kill a big boy. So a, a very good change going to be making that a lot more fair of a unit. The rate of fire has been increased. So it used to be a six seconds uh, that you would have to wait. Now it's eight seconds. So a good change. Line of sight has also been reduced from 42 down to 30, uh, which is a pretty big deal. But uh, obviously you'll be able to get the, uh, the arsenal upgrade for that. Take it back up to 36. So that won't be too bad. Solid shot and explosive shot range reduced to 28 uh, from 30. So that is a... A fair reduction, a two range, so two more than a falconet. Uh, so now increases by plus two upon reaching the industrial age. So they're not nerfed in the late game, but just rather nerfed in the fortress age. So that's a reasonable change. So two pretty big nerfs, or three pretty big nerfs. Uh, the line of sight's not that big, but uh, yeah, three pretty big nerfs right there. Uh, siege attack range also reduced, wow, okay, uh, to 28 from 40. Uh, and now increases by plus six upon reaching the industrial imperial age. So this is a really good change. Uh, so one of the big issues with this was that you could sort of sit outside your opponent's base, you could mortar down your opponent if they tried to push up with you, or up to you, then you could shoot at them. Uh, if you saw calves, you could just pull back and you could still hit their buildings, despite their calves having to come out from behind the building. So a really good change. It's going to fix a lot of issues with the big boy. Uh, 
uh, upon reaching the industrial age no longer gains the 25% attack and hit points and instead gains 25% more splash area damage <sighs> oh i hope that's been tested because that concerns me there's so much splash damage already on that unit i i can just picture it right now just you know two big boys taking out an entire army in a single shot i'm looking forward to that uh, and the cost has actually been reduced from a thousand uh, 1100 influence down to a thousand so it's a little little bit of a buff there uh, but overall obviously a nerf in the early game a buff in the late game uh so pretty decent uh cards for the ethiopian so jesuit influence this is the card that i used in the first age it's been moved from the first age to the second age this is going to affect me significantly the build order that i put on this channel uh the semi ff that i've been doing it's going to affect that pretty uh pretty well um, I'm thinking probably the best way to deal with it is now I'm just going to be eating a cow in transition, or not in transition rather, uh, but in instead of going up with however many villagers I am now, just go up with one less. That way you age up to the next age slightly faster, and then you can send Jesuit influence and then four villagers after, and then send your nine Kennedyers. But we'll see how it goes. Now the Hausa. Uh, so hand cavalry hit points can now be included in decks. Hand cavalry damage can now be included in decks. So this is a really great change for the Hausa. Uh, they've now got access to those hand cavalry uh, cards. Fulani Archer Combat has now been fixed. It's no longer in age 5. It's uh, it's now in age 3, so really good changes. Uh, Durbar Parade fixed an issue where the splash damage granted to Lafiti Knights and Raiders could damage unintended targets. So a good change. Glad this has been fixed already. Uh, and then Free Cattle. The Free Sangha with each shipment uh, granted by the House of Civilization bonus now respects build limits. Okay, that's a buff to the Fulani as well, because one of the things I'd theorized about is that you didn't need the Fulani... Uh, because you got free Sangha cattle anyway, you could go above that limit. Uh, so these these are really good changes. Now, in addition to that, they've also fixed... Now, this is something that I had actually been uh, experiencing significantly, the D3, D11 crash reports. Uh, so it's an ongoing thing. It hasn't been fixed up yet. I, I do note that they actually did fix uh, one of the D3, D11 crashes due to a camel going slightly off the bat. I'm very curious exactly how that was being caused, but I still get this crash, this kind of... It, uh, when this happens, I have to reset my computer. My whole graphics card goes, so I'm curious to see that. Things that I'd like to see changed. So for the Ethiopians, the Gascania still feels very strong at the moment. Also, the Javelin Rider especially seems really, really strong. Now, I don't think that this these two cards are going to be affecting the Javelin Rider. If they do affect the Javelin Rider, it's going to be an absolute beast for the Hausa. Uh, for the Hausa but I don't think it's going to. Um, other than that, I think mainly the issue is the Gascania, probably also the Cannoneers need to be looked at a little bit, but most other stuff, it's, it seems all right. And I think that there's probably going to be some other balance changes that do address Hausa, because I know they've got some pretty crazy build orders, which I'm going to be bringing to you this week. Fellas, I hope you've enjoyed this video and a quick look at the hotfix that's been totally nerfing the Mortar, as well as the, uh, the Hausa and Ethiopians more generally. Uh, so thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.